I've switched from the Sprinter that has plenty of leg room. Even the seat is moved up right now because I'm working in the back. The Sprinter has plenty of leg room, no problem at all. But the Ford Transit little tiny pecker engineers put in uh, a seat base that is too far forward. In addition, those bozos put this, uh, well, they didn't put it there, but they mounted the seating position up against the front wheel well, which cuts out your left foot leg room. So it, this all should be forward, uh, further back away from the front tire. But the bozos think everybody has a short pecker, so they, those short people, did it this way, and I really hate that. So I have a hack around that, and this would be at your own discretion. This is not um, evaluated by any organization for safety, so that would be completely at your own discretion. It does have to be professionally done, or else if there's a collision, or something if the seat moves if you hit a bump um, it could be a safety issue my little disclosure okay so uh, what how I moved the seat back uh, approximately four inches is I removed the old bolts that are t40 and you have to be careful uh, you'll want to let some penetrating oil soak overnight because those are very tight and you don't want to strip it uh, you can strip a Torx bolt pretty easy. Um, and then I replaced those with this size here. And then with a lock nut. And I used some rubber bushings. You can get all different types. This one came from uh, a mini split air conditioning mount. And I drilled the hole through the middle after removing the bolt that was in there. And so I put the bushings under the seat, under the bracket, so the bolt goes through there. So the bolt has to be long enough to go through. And then I have a lock washer on the other side. There was enough room to use a wrench to hold that while I uh, torque that with a... Um, electric drill so it can't be too loose can't be too tight but you definitely have to feel under there and make sure that there are several threads on the end and so that the nut isn't um, kind of vulnerable to coming off make sure the nylon the nylock part is uh, up enough so it won't come loose not too tight, not too loose, so uh, this rubber bushing raises the seat and the bolt allows the seat to be moved back. So this hole that I chose here, I had to drill a little larger for this bolt. Don't use a bolt too small, that would be a safety issue. Make sure the diameter is at least the size of, uh, the same size of the ones you took out from factory. This other stuff is DC to DC charging for the RV. That's going to be a different video. And so since my seat was able to be raised up, I have now enough room to put under a uh, jumper cable and a battery backup uh, jumping booster. Because, uh, and also now the battery, now there's a big gap in the back where the battery can come out this way without having to remove the seat, which is ridiculous. Um, car batteries should be easily accessible and Ford bonehead engineers designed it where you have to remove the seat to get the battery out. But with my hack, you don't have to remove the battery anymore. And I just leave all those covers off. Those factory covers they had on there, I don't like them. And you can see on the other side here, so you got, when you're drilling that hole, you're gonna have some frayed metal parts. You'll have to vacuum up. So here's what it looks like in the front. The factory setting um, had it where this hole here was in there. 
So it's a pretty good about four inches move back, which helps substantially due to that stupid bump they got there. Uh, so same thing on the other side. So I just, I put the factory screw back in there so there's just not a hole that will get rusty in case I resell it and some short person needs it back to the way it was. They can do, I can do that for them. Uh, the person who did the cabinetry work for me here um, had it designed for the factory uh, maximum seat position back and so I had to cut into the cabinet work to get my seat to come the back end to come back a little further which I hated to do because I paid a lot uh, for the cabinet work it's these this cabinet work is extremely expensive to hire somebody or even to do it yourself these materials this is um, this is hardwood so uh, in my opinion I think what I did actually may enhance safety because now I have um, I sit up higher and I have a better field of view when I'm driving and these uh, solid rubber bushings provide a little bit more of a uh, stable um, stability for the seat both uh, Ford Transit and Mercedes Sprinter have this ridiculously huge handbrake right here which makes it difficult to get from front to rear and rear to front driving position without snagging something on that and it's also very uncomfortable very bad when you have a dog riding with you they hate this thing in the way um, I wish there were a way to completely remove it and replace it with just a little lever or button or something but I'm not gonna do it because that's uh, that could jeopardize the safety of the vehicle substantially well that's pretty simple how to um, get your driver's seat to come back and up uh, going up is optional you can raise it up with bushings you don't have to have the bushings you can just uh, use the bolts uh, you can use nylocks or lock washers with the standard lock uh, a standard um, <sighs> A standard nut um, but I don't think that's as good as nylock unless the nylock is worn out then you then the lock washer may be better so if the nylock is previously used you can tell by looking at it yeah ant bit me there um, see this one doesn't look like it's used it doesn't have grooves in it or anything and that's how it is done